Hi, welcome to the Jayfeather 25RB by Jayco. We're going to do a brief tour and we're going to start on the outside. First thing we'll note is your hot water tank, your hot water heater. There are three things to note on this type of hot water tank. One, the drain plug. The second thing I note would be the pressure relief valve. Now, if you ever remove this drain plug, you always have to open the pressure relief valve, otherwise this will shoot out of there like a missile. Uh, the third thing to note here is the reset for your water heater is on the outside of the unit here. Continue along the outside and we'll come to your one of four stabilizing jacks located at the four corners of your trailer. The trailer should be level before you engage these. These are used just to uh, stabilize the trailer. They should not be used to, to level it. Next, we'll come to the front storage compartment. In this front storage compartment, you'll notice you have storage for your manual operation of your tongue jack. You have the manual operation of the of the stabilizing jacks. You have light, you also have a pre tire pressure gauge, as well as lighting for the front lights. Also located in the front storage compartment is the power cable, 30 foot, 30 amp cable. We also have on these in this unit, they are equipped with a mount for, for cameras on either side of the front. Also note, the running lights on the front are also controlled with the switch right here. Moving along to the front, notice the storage for your batteries. We have the two 12 volt leads here. This is a new unit, so we do not have the battery hooked up at this time. Also on the front here, we have your propane system storage and your regulator. This is a crossover regulator and what that means, whatever direction this handle is pointing in, so in this case it's pointing to this tank, that is the tank it'll draw from first. Uh, when the pressure drops below a predetermined amount, it'll then automatically switch over and draw from this tank regardless of the position of this handle. And one thing I have noticed is that some people will put the handle in this position thinking it shuts it off. It doesn't. It doesn't do a thing. Also on the front, we have your breakaway switch. Uh, so what happens here in the event that your trailer gets separated from your tow vehicle, you'll pull this pin and engage the trailer brakes. If at any time you find that your trailer brakes are engaged, and they shouldn't be, check to make sure this pin is properly seated in here. Right beside that, we have your solar ready connection port. Then at the front, we have your cargo loading light and your electric tongue jack. Now in the event that there is no power, there is a port, you can remove this and use the manual jack that we noted earlier. Continue along the side. You'll notice that we have a second camera attached to your, or camera mount, I should say, attached to your marking light at the side. Continue along the outside. Next, we'll come to your black tank flush. You hook your, your hose up to here and you can, you'll use it to flush out your black tank. And right below that, we have the city water connection. This is where you connect the, basically the garden hose from the campground. Have your outdoor shower, and right below here we have the output for your black and grey water tanks. Here's the valve for the black water, and the valve for the grey water is right there. Your rear storage compartment. It's light. So notice there is ladder access in the back as well as a rear camera mount as well. Continue along the outside. Next thing we come to is your step light. Scroll by a switch there. And we'll notice your two under awning speakers here and here. 
Of note also is the outside access for the fridge. This is actually venting here. So it's important that this remains free of any obstructions for the fridge to operate properly. And because it's under the awning, I know it says it's hot, but I'd like to make note that uh, this does get really hot when the furnace is in use. And because it's under your awning, there's a good chance that uh, you could come in contact with it. So just be careful. Right next to that, we have the potable water input. So this is where you put the uh, fresh water to fill the tank. Right next to that, we have the output for your cable. So you can watch cable or TV underneath your awning. And beside that, we have your GFCI controlled plug. Now, we'll make our way inside. So, first things first, have the main lights. Turn that on, as well as your awning light. We have this really nice big closet here. Pantry. Right as soon as you come in the door, we have your fire extinguisher and your smoke detector. Now, usually they say to check your smoke detector every six months, whenever a daylight savings time. I would also check your carbon dioxide smoke detector at the same time, and that is located right here. There's a little button on the front of here. Press that. Should make all sorts of noise, you'll know it's working. And just do that when you check your, the batteries on your smoke detector. From here, we're gonna step into the bathroom. Nice and spacious, big, lots of storage. We also know the light switches here for the fan, light, and the unit's GFCI plug. Now, if you see that red light on, that means that it's been tripped and that this power won't work, but it also means anything on the load side of this plug probably stuff by the sink stuff outside probably won't be working so if that's the case press the top black button it resets it and then everything should work just fine continuing on into the main living space here right underneath where the lights were we have your main uh, indication panel from here we can cycle through pretty much everything we have your water pump, electric heater on gas, we can turn them on and off from here. Uh, we have your awning and slide controls, as well as your main uh, AC settings. Now, one thing we've noticed with this unit, when you have the heat on, uh, the blower or the fan from the AC uh, seems to automatically run. Now, normally you would switch it out of uh, the fan out of high mode and that would change that, but on these newer ones, it doesn't seem to be an option. On noting we have switches for the lights over the couch and a switch for the light over the dinette here. But we'll turn right around, do full circle, your TV, you have your radio here. There's two zones. Zone one is inside the trailer. We'll have to play music or sound through the speakers on the inside of the trailer, and zone two we'll play a music or sound on the uh, speakers on the outside. This has HDMI and USB connectivity as well as uh, Bluetooth. Moving on to your fridge. Note, when you open it up, there's an on-off button. There is a button to switch between gas and electric. Um, auto will pick from what's available gas and electric automatically taking electricity first uh, gas obviously will just switch uh, select from gas however there is a little light here that will flash if there is a problem with the gas system oftentimes that's uh, merely forgetting to open the valve at the on the gas tank itself we have nice lighting for your burner knobs we also have an automatic lighting feature. You merely turn this to the light position and then turn the sparker and it'll light. Uh, the oven portion operates the same, however the only difference, you press and hold the button in while you turn the igniter. You can turn these lights off as well. Notice here.
right in the countertop. We have a neat little feature. We have the plugs, USB charging ports. Also noticed that we have access to the water pump under here. Working our way into the bedroom. Notice your emergency exit. To engage this, you simply press down on the black tab, push the red handle over, swing it out, push it all the way out of the trailer, and then pull the red tab to remove the screen, and you may escape to safety. Here you have switches here that controls a nice little night light back there, as well as two USB ports. We have a vent fan in the bedroom as well. Some units will have the USB charging only on one side, and this one actually has USB connectivity and charging on both sides. So we have storage underneath. The next thing we'll look at that is important is the power center. The power center, as uh, you'll see, it has breakers like you would see in your house, and they operate much the same. And then right below there, you have fuses like you would see in your car. Another thing I'd like to note, I've been using the AC. With these baffles open, most of the cold air will fall from here. When you close the baffles, it directs the air to these various ports around the trailer. Well, that does it for our tour. If there's anything that you wanted to see more of, or you have any questions, give us a call and we'll be happy to try to help you out as best we can. Thank you very much.